Hello and welcome back to round two back nine action from the 2021 Green Mountain Championship here in Jeffersonville, Vermont. Jeremy Colling, Paul Uliberry, Big Berry Commentary. We have a little bit of a, a tough round, tough conditions. One player is doing pretty well. The rest aren't, to put it lightly. Yeah, but the back nine is the scoring nine. It really is. There's a lot of birdies to be had. There's a lot of fun to be had and good kicks to be had and a lot of to be had. <laughs> Only one player from our league card still remains on the leader page here, the top 10, and that's Matty O. He is uh, trailing Chris Dickerson right now, who has a hot front nine at six under, but Matt Orem playing some smart golf through one of the most difficult stretches on the course, seven, eight, nine, getting away with par on all three of those. Moving on to hole 10, par three, 315 feet. This is the second easiest hole on the course and feels like a bit of a reprieve from the difficulty these guys just Things faced. to get down. And as I say that, Matty O goes OB. Not a good one to go OB. You have a lot of room on the left-hand side to swing that sidearm in. MJ going turnover Comet, and that's pretty clinical. Was that his banger? It could. I don't think it would be. I don't think he's throwing it this far. I think it probably would have been a Comet. Here's the Comet, man. That's gone. This looks like it's going to go too far right or too long or just be parked. Oh, good little reaction. Yep. And this is a good bounce back birdie hole for Zach. Just sit. Go in. Sit. Okay, there it is. One par, three birds. Eddie O from 45. Oh, it looked great. Just over the top. <laughs> it looked like it was in. That was a crazy angle. <laughs> I don't know. What he just, the little wiggle stand-up move he did there. MJ. <laughs> it's been a while since he's seen a birdie. Going all the way back to hole two. I like how he just fired it in there. That's how Chandler putts, man. No. Um, oh, MJ. MJ. We know that's how Chandler putts. Okay. It yeah. seems like sometimes, I feel like when he really finishes his stroke with that aggressive nature, he... MJ, MJ's a nasty putter. I yes. mean, he, he's the only player, I think, in disc golf history that's had a ma major manufacturer make three putters for him. They made the zone for him when he switched from Innova to, to Discraft in 2008. He wanted something with a little more glide, so they made the ringer, and then he wanted something with a groove top, so they made the ringer GT. I'm pretty sure... All three of those were made specifically for Michael Johansson. Hole 11, par 4, 600 feet. Sounds a bit feet. needy if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> 600 feet. There's a tree in the middle off the tee that players are going to want to stay right of. Try to finish somewhere in the middle of the fairway, but there is OB left and OB right. This one's all about picking your angle. What kind of approach angle do you want to set yourself up with? A nice shot from MJ. That's going to be a slight turnover down the hill. Yeah, the only tough the the tough thing about this shot is it goes left OB like this. Oh uh, yeah, that's tough. Unless it gets the Matteo roll. Yeah, only Matteo gets those. You want to throw it flat, but there are the trees on the right that kind of there's branches right there to the yep. right of his disc that kind of keep you honest. It really does. And like this looked very straight and look how close he is to the mm -hmm. to the OB. So it's it's a technical straight shot that you have to throw here. You, you look back and you see so much open airspace, but off the tee it does not feel that comfortable. This is the shape you want. Yep. A little Anheuser comes back. Yeah. The problem with this is now he's cut off his angle into the basket. Because he's gone so far. So the Anheuser backhand in there isn't open like this is for MJ, which he doesn't turn this enough. He's going to need a good okay. tree kick. That's decent. And once you get down this hill, there is OB left and OB right as well. So it's you're not out of the woods yet because you're not even into them yet. And OB deep. Yep. And that was actually close to going out of bounds for, for Zach. 
I don't know. This is a comet? Yes. This is way too much disk. That's what I was saying. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. No, it's perfect. He. What do we know? It might have been a, a breaker. That would make more sense. Either way, he is going to break even on hole 11 with a par. Nice. I like that. Thank you. Er, he's going to have to earn it from there. 35, mm. 40, 40 footer down the hill. And this is quick. Okay, laying it up. And all of a sudden, we've got shadows on the green as the weather just has not decided. It has not made its mind all day long. It's gone from rain showers to just cloud cover to heavy wind to heavy rain. It's just been a little bit of everything except warm. Missed opportunity for Matty O, so... After that nice start, it's kind of slowing down. Only three down through 11 isn't exactly where he'd like to be at this point, I don't believe. Hole 12, par 4, Paul. What's up? 700 feet. Yeah, it is. Two islands. They are islands, actually. Yeah, two islands. You're going to want to land about 380 feet to the left, which opens up your angle into this island. Playing it with a big tailwind today, so you're going to want to drift something from left to right. The further left you get off the tee, the more you can work your disc into that nice angle. That was the worst thing I've ever... I no, think that was, that I was think, bad, yeah. It's okay, though, because you, what people know now is that MJ is in a bad position. you got to work your drive to the left, otherwise you're drawing dead, because there's a big set of trees that are straight off the tee, and there's only a little opening on that left side that really services as a quality landing zone. Chandler's heading there, but he's also kind of not really heading there. A little short. Got the green flag, though. <laughs> yeah, very enthusiastic. Yep, you're green. Yeah, Zach is outdriven. Oh, no, and he's gone out of bounds again. My goodness, he has not been able to keep it in bounds. This course knows how to compound your mistakes and it just you start to lose trust in your disc selection you start to lose trust in your wind reading and it just goes downhill so quick i don't even want to talk anymore with how bad i butchered that <laughs> it wasn't that bad <laughs> there's zach doing good uh, that's what i sound that's what i felt like i sounded like and if anybody got behind the mic, they would do much better. You're right. That was awful. <laughs> Basically, none of these guys got to the left side, which is where yeah. you need to be to open up a shot that's comfortable into the green. You want to flex something yep. that's stable because of the wind where those trees are blowing mm -hmm. that comes back and makes the fairway very wide. If you're where MJ is, now you're going to turn something too much yep. and you won't have the disc to get all the way to the basket. It is. This is a incredibly challenging two-shot hole. And it's middle of the pack as far as difficulty, a 4.11 average. It's because there's so many difficult holes out here at Fox Run. See, it is, but I feel like if you, it's, it's the drive that makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get to that left side because you'll get where Chandler was and you'll be blocked. You'll have nothing. But if you get right in front where Chandler was, you'll have a, just a dead set hyzer right into the pin, which is an easy shot for a 400-foot shot for this card. You'd, you'd hope. I, I do hope. Yeah, nothing has been made to look easy so far today yet, though. Yeah, they also haven't had 400-foot hyzers. But Chandler has this very tricky... That is a short putt no one wants to have to make. And you see that flag ripping sideways. Yeah, it, it 
it's weird because a few holes back, it seemed like perfectly calm, nothing to worry about. And now look at that. It's just ripping. This weather really left to right cross. <laughs> He's going to run and jump it into there, into the basket. I like that though. Reset yourself. I mean, these tappings should, you shouldn't even have to think about it. But when that wind is rip, ripping like that, just give yourself a little break, reset. We've all missed them. I did today. And I, I, I mean it. I literally think I missed top five shortest putts I've ever missed in my life. I want I want a rebuttal. A whole 13, Paul. Par three, 360 feet. You're going to want to throw something semi-stable down towards this telephone pole, drifting from right to left. You want to miss those trees on the right. You want a slow fade that kind of just drifts right into the circle. What do you think the best disc is? Mid-range, fairway driver? The Raptor. I'm more of like a Thunderbird type of guy <laughs> myself, but... Well, let me ask you, what do you think the best disc is? I mean, for this hole, I went with Eagle, and I I, I like the results. But I think Fairway Driver is, is the proper choice. To totally. I think Fairway with whatever you... Oh, don't get the roll! With okay. whatever you do is going to kind of filter in there. As long as you miss that telephone pole that he went around, that's the big deciding factor. <sighs> Matty, oh, Miss much it. wider line coming with a lot more hyzer. Wow, interesting play there. He's going to have some trees to contend with. Come on, Zach. Yeah, no kidding. Never rooted for someone more in my life. Oh, no. Let's get back in bounds. Oh, there's a wall there. He's going to ride the wall the whole way. Oh, my goodness. Cool, OTB. I hope you sell a lot of discs there. You just cost Zach Melton a stroke. Maybe they made him some money, though, at the same time. Doubt it. I'm not happy with OTB right now. No, I'm just kidding. Those guys are cool. No, I'm kidding. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> but that does suck. Chandler has never missed a putt. I don't expect he's going to miss this one. And there you go. Yeah. Really, honestly, he is doing so well. To be under par at this point with the quadruple bogey in hole three and the bogey he took back there on nine, he's playing some good disc golf. Yeah, he was not anywhere close to Matty O for a little bit there, and mm -hmm. now he's kind of creeping back. He's within two, so we got a nice little battle again on the card. He's within oh, one. he's within one. Matty O has really fallen off lately. This is not like this man. He has been putting on... A display off the tee and on the putting green lately. He's just kind of falling flat right now. I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell Hole Breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Range Finder at the link in the description. Hole 14 is a bit awkward. The wide hyzer carries OB the whole way, and the straight shot has tons of guardian trees blocking the green. Either way, it's a good get. Let's see how it plays out. MJ throwing a flip up hyzer. He's going to need to get a little more distance. That's not cresting the hill. That's going to leave him about 45, 50. Lots of trees in the way. About 43 trees between him and the basket. Chandler, oh, yeah, through everything. That's going to have one, maybe two trees in the way. That one looks like it squares it up. He's going to have to straddle out and have a little tricky hyzer putt into there, but that's his preferred angle to putt with. Matty O playing needs, the wide. I like the wide yeah, play here, but. He's lucky to stay inbounds. I've never seen one hit those guardian trees on the right-hand side and not just roll straight out of bounds to the right. It is very, very strange how well you can predict that to happen. These trees that Zach is pushing right here. And don't. Don't. Okay, curls back up. That's fine. And, in fact, it might have even put him in a better angle uh, with less trees in the way for the putt. Don't do it. Okay. MJ unable to back up his birdie on 13 with a birdie on 14. And Matty O, oh, you can see the emotion right there. It's just not quite working out the way he was planning on right now.
Parsevo, oh, get in there. Ooh, hi there. Seems pretty good to me. And Chandler definitely obstructed. No way. Kind of a little spitty. Yeah. You know, the right side chains on these mock X's, they usually catch pretty well, but they they are chain heavy. And sometimes if you don't get them in the right spot, they will push back out to the side. And that unfortunately was the case for Chandler. Matteo going down to the knee there. Glasses on the nose, taking out the par. He's got to find some birdies on his way out of this course if he wants to remain relevant in this event. In the next two holes here at Fox Run could easily be switched out for Brewster Ridge because they are heavily wooded, starting with 15 par three, 315 feet. This is going to be a little sidearm shot or a backhand turnover. The trick of these trees on the left side of the fairway right there, they come into play for a lot of these shots. Getting the disc to start drifting to the right at the right time is a very difficult thing to do. MJ, no stranger to shots shaped like this. This is North Carolina golf all day, just coming up a bit short. Yeah, I just didn't have... Enough power to make that corner with that angle. Threw it a bit too soft. Let's see if Chandler can make the correction. He slips, and he does. This looks great, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, is, that is beautiful. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. That was so cool. I went around the corner and then just nosedive right towards the basket. That was picture perfect. He, when he slipped, I didn't think he had enough on it, but he really got... The right amount of spin to get. Oh, wow. A little deep. He got a little love getting through all the trees on yep. the left hand side, but then he's still going to have to earn it being backside of the green about 45, no, 42 feet. And that's, the, you can see there with Matteo and Zach Melton's drives, the difficulty of the left to right moving either the, ba the lefty backhand or the righty sidearm, is that those trees in the backside really come into play quick. Getting it to drift early, you almost feel like you have to saw it off early to be able to make that corner properly. Nothing going for Michael. He'll just tap in for par. Zach needs little of the same but that's not going to draw any metal and he's going to be left with a little 15 footer adio no again and once again he finds the ground and he's going full commit though he's given it everything that's certainly we can't take that away from him and zach is still chipper i mean that's you got to love that about him, you know? He's not playing his best round, and he's still cheering for his card mates. In this game, preparation is everything. Success is not by accident. Because you know, the course plays no favorites. In this game, detail matters. Idio Sports. Hole 16, I'm not quite sure the, how this is not the second or third hardest hole in this course, but it is the fifth. Par four, 700 feet through this narrow corridor. You want to land your drive somewhere near that short tee pad there. That is an A plus drive. From there, it's pretty wide open, but there is OB down the right side. Baskets on this little elevated platform here, but this tee shot is so important. This basically is the entire hole how difficult it is getting out of the chute. A little heavy on the hyzer. He's going to need a good reaction on that right side. That's the oh, worst reaction he could have got. No way. And there's no way for him to know how bad he just got hosed. Oh. Let's not tell him. <laughs> no one tell him. MJ knows how 
What you got hose there? <laughs> I couldn't quite see that one actually. Maddie O not quite getting the the flat out of out of the shot he was looking for. Staying left is key though. He's going to have that tree to contend with, but you can still lean out and get a sidearm through the gap. Par on this one feels so good. Yeah, and if you end up anywhere in the middle, how? How did you do it? Tell me. By going over that little hill. If you end up anywhere in the middle, tucked on that left-hand side or the right-hand side, it is pretty easy to then chip one to the other side. It's a pretty big window to get from left to right to that if you're not trying to go all the way to the pin. Did Zach kick right and then kick back left, or was that his third shot? He did. Oh, Double wow. kick. Nice. Nice. MJ threw the gap in two. That should set up a relatively routine up and down for par. Yeah, and so like I said, you can you can kind of chip one out of there fine. Mm -hmm. And then it's a fairly easy upshot from there. Chandler not doing that, but he could get up up and down from there for sure. That would where that would be where a great drive ended up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is what you're really hoping for, but you don't have the skill to do it. You know, that's like where you want to be. You have the skill to do it. I saw your drive was all the way at the end of the shoot. Took a bogey. Here's Chandler. Getting, yes, needs to slow down. Slow down. There is OB back there, and Chandler has found it. Bummer. And a, a nice little glimpse of the beauty of Smuggler's Notch there in the background. The, this place is immaculate. And once you get to the top of the hill here, once you're on the green on 16, teeing off on 17 and 18, you really get a moment to just take a look and really absorb the surroundings. Matteo with a good approach. MJ with a good approach. Chandler's going to have to make an outside the circle putt for his bogey? Yes. Which I'm sure he'll make. Oh, no, not this time. He has been putting so well today. What does it seem like whenever Zach's putting, it's just the wind turns on and then the, and then the mm. bad stuff... It keeps happening. It just does. Oh, gosh. Get in there. So that double is going to take Chandler back to even par. The struggles continue for this card. It is it is just the conditions on this course, man, I can't emphasize it enough. When this place is slick, when it's windy, when it's cold, when it's wet, it's tough. And we had all of those conditions going we also had some sun. I don't know how that factors in, how that's even possible, but that's what Vermont gave us. It was like sunny, rainy. It, it was. Which it, is actually quite beautiful. That is true. If you're just out here enjoying the park, you're probably really having a good time. If you're out here playing disc golf, you're probably not having a good time. Yeah, you're like, hey, kids, come check this out. And it's sunny, and it's kind of sprinkling, and then a little moose runs by, and you're like, oh. And all the little mooselings. Yeah. A little bear comes and eats a moose. And you're like, whoa, yeah. let's go inside. This is weird. <laughs> Hole 17. <laughs> Hole se okay. Hole 17, par 3, 200. Oh, 385 feet. Blind hyzer downhill the whole way. Elevated basket with OB all the way down the right side the whole way. You got to pick a spot in the background, commit to that spot, and just trust the disc to do the work. Look at this guy throwing the glidey flip up push shot. And don't you do that. Okay. What a shot though. Beautiful. I mean, what I like to see is if they can get the height of the tree line. If you can match that height, it's going to swing, which he's done pretty perfectly. Yep. That's going to be just pretty much money. Sit down. Don't you oh, do you it. Oh, you rolling son of a gun. Yeah, I think that he, he matched the height of the tree line at the very highest part of the tree line. You kind of want to match the height of the uniform tree line. 
correct? Yeah. Yeah. He went up, he went up yeah, in the clouds too, a bit. Too high. Yeah. So that's good. Right? This or, is money, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That was the tree line, Just, and he's probably going to get the... So, okay. Uh, Finally. See if Chandler can finish with a couple birdies here. and You know, a couple under at this course, they're, these guys aren't the only ones struggling, believe me. If you can finish a couple under out here, you're not... You're not lose. I mean, he's going to lose ground because he came into the round in first place, but he's still going to maintain pretty decent position in this field. If he can stay at even par, get one or two coming in, mm -hmm. average a six six. That's great golf. Yep. Big putt for Chandler. To average a six six. Boom! Oh, such a butter, such a butter putter. Chandler is out here not only to compete for this tournament. But he's also one of several players trying to grab those last five spots for the USDGC. I don't know if they're the very last ones. I, I don't think they are, actually. Nice putt from Zach Melton. But Chandler is still trying to get that spot. And he's got a lot of things on his mind coming into this event. Disc Golf Pro Tour points. USDGC qualification spots. I mean, he's winning or was winning. He's not anymore. But he was winning. There's a lot of things going on this week up here in Vermont. Which I guarantee, I can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty sure that's got to be the first time he's went to sleep with a elite series lead. Well, he did win. It wasn't elite series, but he did win the CCR just a couple months back. Let's go with the gatekeeper check-in with Chris Dickerson on hole nine. And we mentioned Chris Dickerson's front nine. He's five under at this point, but how did he get to six, you ask? Well, drives like that on hole nine are quite special. Making this hole seem simple is, it, it's hard to put into words how good that is. So now he is seven under going into hole 11. Here's his drive. Picture perfect. He needs to just get a little. Oh, that's far. He's far. So he's got the little turnover putter shot down the hill. Watch this. Well, you can imagine what happened there. Didn't want to spoil that one for you guys, but Chris Dickerson with the eagle on hole 11 and going into 18 at 11 under for the round, which is just bonkers. Keeps his drive in the center. And if he can get up and down, he will set a new course record on this slightly altered Fox Run Meadows course. Good touch. Oh, sit. And good reaction on the green. And this putt right here for 12 under that 10 92 unofficially rated. That brings him to 20 under. Or is it 21 under? 21 under par. It says a that's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. It's a good score after three rounds. It, it honestly a great score after three rounds. Chris Dickerson's there after two. Hole 18, hardest hole on the course. 4.87 average. Might as well just call it a tough par five. If you go OB early, you're basically reteeing. If you're going to make any mistakes, you have to go OB left. That is Jay putting the brakes mm -hmm. on. That's nice. He's going to have that wide. Left to right bending turnover that he likes. Tough to get him in position from there for the birdie, though. Difficult tee shot for a lefty. Zach Melton stripes that. <laughs> you can hear the sigh of relief. No more genuine sound than that landing inbounds on 18. This is looking really nice. Oh. That's blistered and just perfect. Center cut. Mm -hmm. Now 
Adio. This is, yeah. Get, get down. down. Get down, get down, get down. So Matty O is going to finish without a birdie. And I, uh, since hole six. Hole six. Wow. MJ laying up. Wow, that takes a lot of gamesmanship. Hmm. For you to be able to be like, okay, I'm one under. That's not really the best score, but being five under, five under, combine mm -hmm. those two scores, that's not good. Not bad, yeah. Melton, he's trying to finish his round in a decent way. He's going to have a putt inside the circle. That would get him to six over for the round. Chandler with a, not his forte with the forehand, but he's got a serviceable one. Just sit down. Don't you even think about it. That is so wrong. <sighs> that mound, you do see those reactions like that occasionally. That was a tough break for Chandler. Well, that was just pretty. Mm-hmm. And MJ will finish. <laughs> He's will finish at 10 under total for the two round total. And Chandler, this is for par. And why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he worked so hard <laughs> for that one under par. And I'm I am actually thoroughly impressed with how he performed today with everything that he went through. I agree. No, 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 that's gone. Oh, man. Now, I don't understand why Zach decided to putt this one from this spot. It rolled OB. He could have played from the same lie, taken the stroke, but it doesn't matter now. He's taken that lie. He's missed that putt, and now he will have a tap in for the double bogey. Matty O finishes with a par on 18, a very un Matty O like performance on the back nine with two bogeys, no birdies. Zach Melton, nine under first round, nine over second round, all square. And man, if there was ever a way to tell the difference between Brewster Ridge and Fox Run, it was what we just saw right there. That course just ate our lead card up. It's another course of just patience. You got to be patient. You got to pick your spots. We saw actually MJ do that, and he found himself at a 10 under par. It's not a great score, but it's good enough to keep him in contention for a top 10 spot, which is really a great performance here as we see yep. you know we saw dickerson with that fire emoji of 12 under that's oh, not re really realistic for anybody in the field to think okay i'm gonna shoot a 12 under today especially in the conditions we had what you have to do is you tip your hat go on to tomorrow luckily for these competitors that struggled today four round tournament ricky wysocki shoots an 11 under and he's two back that just puts in into perspective how great chris dickerson's round was our league card, they have separated themselves a bit. They have played an incredible two-round total. Come back for round three in the second half of the 2021 Green Mountain Championship tomorrow. See you then.